What's up guys, it's Samich95 here and welcome to today's video. If you missed my previous video, I reckon you go and check that out first before watching this one. I'll put a link in the description as well as a pop-up video thing which should be on the screen somewhere right now. So if you missed that, go and watch that before watching this one. If you already have done that, my video today is going to be a preview for the second Formula 1 2017 test held at Barcelona from tomorrow or the 7th of March if you're watching later in the week, as well as what we learned from last week's pre-season test. I'm sorry I couldn't bring this video to you sooner, I'm a very busy man, so yeah, please like the video and subscribe if you're new, and yeah, let's go! The first thing I am going to mention following last week's test is what the hell is going on with McLaren Honda for a partnership that once ruled the world of F1. There really hasn't been any improvements, in my opinion, to the Honda engine on reliability or performance at all. I heard somewhere that the McLaren team used five, en five engines in the space of four days. That's over an engine per day. That's pretty bad in the world of F1, really. It's just not good enough. And I watched some videos of the McLaren pounding around Barcelona when it, was, when it decided to run. <laughs> and the drivers were pushing the car. I could see the car sliding in corners. So the drivers were pushing the car pretty hard. And in the end, they finished ninth on the fastest lap table during four days of testing, only beating the Toro Rosso team. So yeah, McLaren, get your heads together and surprise us all in the second test, please. For all F1 fans out there, please put your heads together. Thank you. The next thing we learned last week, not surprisingly, is that the cars are much, much faster than they have been in a long time. With the updated regulations on the cars this year, with the improved aero packages and the increased development on the power units as well as the wider and more consistent tyres, we may see cars maybe at its quickest since the double diffuser seen in the 2009 Braun era. But will it affect overtaking in the races this year? We'll have to wait and see. Mercedes once again looked very formidable in 2017, but they may not be alone at the front. Ferrari seemed very close to the silver hours this season as seen on the lap time charts from last week's test. And Red Bull, surprisingly, seemed very distant in the first test, but they may come alive come the second test. Ferrari on the lap time chart lapped only two tenths slower than the Mercedes on the fastest lap time chart last week, and they were on a slower tyre. But notoriously, there is no way of telling what fuel loads and engine settings were used. But I'd love to see some close racing again as it will draw fans back into the sport that we all know called F1. Leave a like down below if you'd love to see Kimi again on the top step of the podium and vote here over which team you think will be victorious in Melbourne. I am delighted to say ladies and gentlemen we may have a new Pastor Maldonado this year. Lance Stroll, who is the new driver for Williams, crashed maybe two or three times last week in Barcelona. I think it was twice. And he even forced the team itself to abandon, I think it was their final day of testing, due to damage on the car from the previous day. So yeah, not good for the team. The cars this year are more physically demanding than ever before due to the quicker lap times, so fair play to him, good luck to him this season. As for the rest of the teams, I expect Renault to be higher up the grid this season, of high, as I have heard very positive stuff about the improved power unit, and Haas, Force India, Sauber, Torres and Williams are all expected to be around the midfield positions. So looking ahead to the second test then, Ferrari and Red Bull especially will be looking to catch Mercedes. I expect Red Bull's car to behave differently as the test develops over the next four days and fingers crossed they can be right up there. Toro Rosso needs a successful second test after a complete no-go on the final day of the first test. McLaren are hoping to improve on the previous week with, I quote, a new for test 2 power unit. The team have to keep Fernando happy and to do that they have to really improve on their speed and reliability and they have no excuses just because of the heritage and the deep pockets that team have. If they don't improve this week, I expect them down at the bottom in Melbourne. Force India and Williams, both powered by the Mercedes engine, will also be looking to achieve success this week after underachieving in last week's test, especially Williams who didn't run on day four. And finally, the other midfield teams such as Haas, Renault and Sauber, especially Haas, I, in my opinion, will be hoping for more mileage this week to learn more about their new cars and all the best to the teams and drivers participating in Barcelona in the second test. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and vote for who you think will go quickest this week. Don't forget to comment down below on your favourite team, driver or simply your prediction on what will happen in this week's test. 
subscribe if you're new, and yeah, we're all set for the second test. Thanks for watching, goodbye.